Sammy Sosa Friday got an eight-game suspension for exploding cork all over Wrigley Field. Sosa, who admitted corking is bad and apologized profusely after it happened Tuesday, immediately appealed. A hearing won't be held until at least next week, clearing Sammy to play in a pair of nationally televised games against the Yankees this weekend. So the networks got what they wanted. Now can Sosa's appeal get him what he wants, a reduced suspension. Here's Pedro Gomez. Sammy Sosa, who might be the most playful superstar in the majors, was anything but jovial before or after baseball handed him an eight-game suspension Friday. The former MVP and perennial All-Star was subdued after the Yankees beat the Cubs, refusing to discuss his status. You got the Yankees that everybody's been looking forward to the whole season. Everybody's been waiting for this game the whole season. Then what happened happened this morning. How does it affect your mindset going into the game? Happened about what? What happened this morning? When the suspension came down this morning. I don't want to talk about that. Next question. Sammy, you know, you know that you are going to have to miss some games at some point. Do you feel the pressure to help the team as much as you no can pressure. right now? I don't feel no pressure. But when that comes, I will deal with that. Despite his appeal of the suspension, the Cubs realize Sosa will probably miss at least a week. They are two games over 500 with Sosa in the lineup and three games over without him. The Cubs know their best chance of reaching the postseason is with Sosa in the lineup as often as possible. Eight days is eight days. It's, it's, it, uh, you know, it sucks anytime you lose a guy like Sammy for eight days. But again, we got to step up as, as 25 and, and fill that hole. The sad part about the whole thing is that <clears throat> he's just now getting a stroke and then you lose it again and it takes some more time to get it back. So just the timing of the whole thing was, was, uh, was terrible. This team needs Sammy. Uh, we just need to survive while he's out because uh, without him, we can't go all the way. Friday, Sosa and his suspension managed to take the spotlight away from Roger Clemens and his pursuit of 300 victories. Saturday, Clemens may be able to return the favor. In Chicago, Pedro Gomez. In Wrigley Friday, Sammy assuming the position, his first game since the eight-game suspension. He'll play pending the appeal. We flash back to the last time the Yankees played at Wrigley. Game two of the 1938 World Series, Joe DiMaggio homered in the ninth. Top first Friday, Jason Giambi homering. This off Carlos Zambrano, two-run shot, 14th of the year for Giambi, and it's 2-0 New York. Cubs trailed 5-2 in the third, David Wells. Strikes out Sammy. Sosa has not hit a home run since May 1st. Top four, David Wells at the plate. Boomer! Seventh career hit and his first since June 5th of 2000. Wells said he loved Wrigley's crowd, saying, I heard all the fat jokes. Well, here's another one. Wells running. Check this out. Motoring. Oh, man, is he svelte. Cadillacing in a second. New Yankee Ruben Sierra laughing it up. Wells pitched to beauty, allowing three runs on seven hits in seven and two third. Bottom six, Sammy. Deep to right, but not deep enough. Sosa Friday, one for four with two strikeouts, five for 28 since coming off the DL. Two men on in the ninth. Cubs down 5 3. Mariano Rivera gets pinch hitter Hesop Choi. Yankees win 5 3. Clemens goes for 300 Saturday against Terry Wood. Seattle, New York. Matthew Broderick's married to Sarah Jessica Parker, and they're both rich and famous. Bottom four with the game tied at one. Cliff Floyd goes hard with the foul ball, hits the Met ball boy named Kevin in the mug. He was taken for x-rays, which were negative. That's a positive. Had Even a, their ball boys are going down. Yeah, he had a bruised eye, but was well enough to be cleaning the player's shoes after the game. Floyd bruising the Mariners' 13 straight road game streak with that shot that Ichiro cannot get. Solo job. Broderick, by the way, hopes to play Floyd in his life story. Broken glasses and all. Top eight, Edgar Martinez pinch hitting. AL Player of the Month May can't get a regular run during interleague. It shows the dribbler. Mets win. 3-2. A's in Philly, Terry Francona managing the A's with Ken Maka attending his daughter's high school graduation. He's a former Philly manager. So is Connie Mack, Senator Connie Mack III, throwing out the first pitch. Bottom one, Jimmy Rollins. Miguel Tejada, ladies and gentlemen. 
Sahana also broke that up a one for 15 slump with a four for four night. Drove in three with three doubles. Bottom three, David Bell to center. Chris Singleton sticks the landing. And Bell's slump continues. One hit in his last 37 at bats. Bottom seven, first and second, Jason Michaels down the line. Eric Chavez tags third, gets the DP, and the A's win 7-4 as Barry Zito gets his first victory since May 15th, allowed two runs on five hits in six. Toronto at Cincinnati. Jays were just swept in St. Louis, outscored 32-15. It rained early, and then Adam Dunn rained in the bottom of the first off Roy Holiday. His first career leadoff home run, Major League leading 19. Reds trail 2-1. Cincinnati's John Reedling winless in his last 24 appearances, and the wait for a win will continue. Bases loaded for Carlos Delgado, who's already connected for a run-scoring double in the first, and he cannot wait for Reedling's third pitch. Eighth career grand slam is five RBI move and pass. Sammy Sosa for the interleague lead in that category. Holiday would win his eighth straight start, matching Roger Clemens' team record. 9-2 Jays. Nice play by Orlando Hudson. And Angeles. This is a rematch of the 59 World Series. Since then, the Dodgers have been back to the World Series eight times. White Sox still searching. Dodgers have had six skippers. White Sox have had 18. Dodgers have had 32 winning seasons. Brian Jordan, three home runs in his first four games of the season. This is his second in his last 48 games off. Mark Burley, eight losses already this season. Paul LaDuca batting 482 during a 14-game hit streak. They get a 15 game hit streak and it's 2-1 Dodgers. LaDuca going to second on the throw. Top six has Ishii gets Jose Valentin. Ishii went seventh, struck out nine. Top nine call in Eric Gagne. Joe Creedy goes down. 30th straight save off dating back to last season and on this date the Dodgers win 2-1. Boston at Milwaukee, first time in six years. These two have played stickball. Royce Clayton, he can't stick it. Batting 060. Slots 21 games. Well off Tim Wakefield. Clayton goes yard. He went three for three. That should raise his average. And the Brew Crew up three nothing. Now Wakefield up to bat and Wayne Franklin gets him and gets him good. It looked worse than it was. Wakefield might disagree with that. No fracture or bruise. X-rays negative. Wakefield's listed as day-to-day. -day. Hector Almonte in the sixth with the game tied at three. Richie Saxon, eight miles high. 19th home run. Tied for the big league lead. And the Brewers go on to win 9-3. Rangers visiting the Expos in San Juan. Bottom one, they are loaded for Montreal's Brian Schneider. To right, and it's hugging that line so Will Cordero can jog in. They're going to wave Ron Calloway as well. In fact, they wave Fernando Tatis all the way around from first, and Schneider making a heads-up play, tries to sneak in from inside the park. Oh, no, there he is! And he's meets. But it's 5-2 Expos. Bottom five, Schneider again. Two-run shot is six. He drove in a career-high five. They've already had 57 homers in the first 14 games in San Juan so far. Expos win 13-10, but Vlad Guerrero goes on the DL with a herniated disc. Angels in Florida. Carl Pavano coming off the worst outing of his season Sunday. Pounded for nine runs in three and a third against the Reds. And in the first here on Corks one, Jeff Devanna to 30 would score on a Tim Salmon sack fly and pudge. Got hit on the hand by the wild pitch. He would stay in the game. Pavano regroups. Gets Troy Gloss in the fourth. He allowed just one run on three hits in eight. Retired the final 18 he faced. And got help from Pudge in the sixth off Kevin Apier. A three-run shot. Number seven for Rodriguez. His first home run in 16 games. And the Marlins win 4-1. Florida has won 10 of its last 14. He backs first to three at Bob. Bottom five, that's Tony Womack on second. Mark Grace to right off Jason Davis. Matt Lawton is coming up throwing. They weigh Womack. Whoa! Mack. You're out. 3-3 three, three to sixth. Brandon Phillips. Hit by a pitch. Home plate off Hunter Wendelstadt says foul. Eric Wedge says, hey, my guy got hit. That bat continues. Phillips, base hit to left, breaking it 0 for 29 slump. They wave Ben Broussard, and the Indians have a 4-3 lead. Phillips gets only his fourth RBI since May the 20th, and Wedge goes back in the dugout and finds out he's been ejected. Tribe's first interleague win this year, 6-3 final. Baltimore at St. Louis. Albert Pujols swinging a bat made by a tree felled by lightning. 492 over his last 16 games. Coming into this game, batting 379.
but just one for six career against Rick Helling with two outs in the top of the first singles off him now batting 382 and then the bottom of the fourth with two on scores Miguel Cairo five nothing cards Pujols now batting 385 bottom seven score now tied at five guess who's up Pujols guess what he's doing another base hit off Travis Driscoll this time batting 388 and then Pujols finishes his perfect day with the bases cleaning double down the left field line off Jorge Julio Four RBI now batting 391, and the better news is because it's a team game, the Cardinals won it, 8-6. Minnesota at San Diego, and Eddie Guardado knows that coffee is for closers, and he's heavily caffeinated. 17 for 17 in save offs this season, up 4-1 in the bottom of the ninth with two on, two out. Gary Matthews Jr., well, he must have been caffeinated. A double scores Brian Buchanan and... Lou Merloni, Padres down 4-3. Next batter, Ryan Klesko. Double mint, back-to-back -back doubles. That one a blooper, and this game's tied at four. Everyday Eddie's first blown save. Bottom 10th, J.C. Romero in for Minnesota. Up one, bases loaded, and he throws a wild pitch. Rondeo White scores tied at five. We continue top 11, Chris Gomez. Up with two on and two out. Rod Beck in, and... Wins go up 7-5, Mankiewicz and Brzezinski score to Gomez with what proves to be the game winner. So, and Fonzie going to left field. Oh, Craig Monroe is back there, but watch the glove come out from the stands and rob this one from Monroe. Oh, he got punked. <laughs> we flash back, 96 ALCS, you know the play. Orioles, Yankees, Derek Jeter, Tony Tarasco, Jeffrey Mayer. Richie Garcia ruled it a home run. Yanks won 5-4, but this time it is not a home run. Alfonso called out by umpire Gary Darling Friday. Let's look at the play again. They have got to come up with something to discourage this, some kind of penalty, like, you know, a week worth of Celine Dion concerts, something really bad. <laughs> Top 5-4-2 Giants. Kirk Reeder gets Jeremy Bonderman. Reeder allowed three runs on eight hits in six. He's 7-1. Giants win 5-3. Devil Rays and Astros, bottom eight. Bases loaded for the D-Rays, up 8-7 after they trailed 7-0. Jeff Kent to left. Orlando Merced scores. Morgan Ensberg. See! That's my John Miller imitation. Lou goes berserk. Carl Crawford throws home. Here's the play again. Toby Hall, great shot blocking the plate. Hall's glove spot shadow. Looks like Ensberg may have been out. Pinella gives home plate up. Matt Hollowell is two cents worth, and Lou blows a gasket and has to be restrained. This was only a matter of time. Now we give you four chances here. What will Lou do? Will he A, throw his hat, B, kick his hat, C, just cover up home plate with dirt, or heave a base? The answer is C, Lou doing what Lou does best. Astros win 11-8 after blowing a 7-0 lead. They passed the Cubs for the NL Central lead for the first time.